Hello, I am Sumitra Watana, the Director of Office of Science for Land Development, OSRD, Land Development Department, Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperatives, Thailand. Office have six fields of soil quality testing laboratories, which are soil chemistry, soil physics, soil mineralogy, plant analysis, fertilizer, and soil environment, all for recommendations and improvement of soil fertility. Services are for all stakeholders, farmers, researchers, private sector, and university. It is a pleasure for our laboratory to host the choosing of this video to show you how to determine soil organic carbon using Wagley and Black titration method. Organic carbon is one of the most important soil parameters. Determine its quantity in soils permits to derive many information, especially on soil fertility, soil biodiversity, soil erosion, and soil buffer capacity for hazardous chemicals. In this video, we will show you how to quantify soil organic carbon using Walkley Black Titation Method. This protocol allows you to determine oxidizable organic carbon content in soil, calculated from the amount of chromic ion formed during the reaction. Anyway, the method described here does not routinely apply correction for chloride, which will produce a positive interference rate. This standard operating procedure is based on the Wagley and Black Comic Acid Wet Oxidation Method. Basically, oxidizable organic carbon in the soil is oxidized by 0.167 molar potassium dichromate solution in concentrated sulfuric acid. Temperature needed to induce substantial oxidation is raised by the heat of reaction. The dichromate reduced during the reaction with soy is proportional to oxidizable organic carbon present in the sample. The organic carbon can then be estimated by measuring the remaining unreduced dichromate by bactitating with ferrous sulfate or ammonium ferrous sulfate using diphenylamine or phenantholine ferrous complex as an indicator. Regarding this procedure, some points might be noted. Walkley and Black found that on the average about 77% of the organic carbon was recovered by the heat of dilution procedure and a correction factor of 1.3 be used to account for unrecovered organic carbon. For soils with high organic carbon content, the Walkley and Black method may underestimate the result due to the incomplete oxidation of the organic carbon in the sample. Therefore, in case of samples with very high carbon content, smaller sample weights should be used. This method is for the determination of organic carbon in soils. It is not applicable to soils containing significant amounts of carbonized materials. This method is subject to interferences by certain soil constituents that lead to false results in certain types of soils. Chloride, 
ferrous iron and higher oxide of manganese have been shown to undergo oxidation reduction reactions in chromic acid mixtures leading to incorrect values for organic carbon in case of soils with high concentrations of such constituents we recommend to add phosphoric acid after the sample has been cooled in order to eliminate interferences from the ferric ion watch soil sample free of chloride before analyzing or precipitate the chloride as silver chloride by addition of silver sulfate to the digestion acid be aware that this procedure involves the use of hazardous chemicals please take note of following safety and hygiene measures refer to laboratory safety guidelines and material safety data sheets before proceeding be sure to wash hands and clean other export areas with mild soap and water after using all chemical reagents all titrations and handling of chemicals to be undertaken in a firm hood when handling any chemicals Remember to wear safety glasses, gloves, lab coats, remark for some specific elements. Potassium dichromate is an inorganic compound that emits toxic chromium fumes upon heating. It is a known human carcinogen and it is associated with an increased risk of developing lung cancer sulfuric acid must be kept away from naked flames or heat remember to measure the concentration in the air regularly and to carry out operations in a fume hood with exhaust or ventilation do not discharge the waste into the drain keep in mind Never dilute by pouring water into the acid. Always add the acid to the water. Samples should be air dry and sieved to less than 2 mm size. In order to perform the walk leg and black method using titration, you need balance with an appreciation of 0.001 gram for the preparation of reagents precision balance dependent on the weight of the sample 50 ml of burette with an appreciation of plus minus 0.02 ml for the tritrans solution volumetric dispenser of 10 ml of known uncertainty to be used with the potassium dichromate solution and 20 ml to be used with concentrated sulfuric acid 250 LMAO fast 1000 ml of volumetric fast 100 and 250 ml beakers magnetic stirrer, film hood, and burette stand the reagents used for the titration method deionized water or distilled water it should have an electroconductivity less than 0.0015 dc cement per meter potassium dichromate standard 0.167 molar dissolve 49.04 gram of traceable or equivalent analytical grade of potassium dichromate previously dry at 105 celsius for two hours and cool in the desiccator to room temperature sulfuric acid concentrated not less than 96% indicator phenantholine ferrous complex at 0.025 molar is used as an indicator in our laboratory 
dissolve 1.485 gram of phenantholine monohydrate and 0.695 gram of ferrous sulfate heptahydrate in deionized or distilled water. Dilute the solution to a volume of 100 ml. For the titran, you can use either ferrous sulfate or ferrous ammonium sulfate at 0.5 molar. Ferrous sulfate solution 0.5 molar. Dissolve 140 gram ferrous sulfate heptahydrate in deionized or distilled water. Add 15 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid. Cool the solution. Then dilute it to a volume of 1000 ml with deionized or distilled water. Finally, standardize this reagent daily by titrating it against 10 ml of 0.167 molar potassium dichromate, ferrous ammonium sulfate 0.5 molar. Dissolve 196 gram of ferrous ammonium sulfate in 700 ml of distilled water. Add 20 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid. Cool the solution. Dilute it to a volume of 1000 ml with distilled water. Then standardize this reagent daily by titrating it against 10 ml of 0.167 molar potassium dichromate. After preparing necessary reagents, now we are ready to start our procedure using the titration method. Weigh 1 gram of air dye soy into a 250 ml alumeo fast or beaker. Add 10 ml of 0.167 molar potassium dichromate and swirl the fast gently to disappear the soy into the solution. Then, with care, rapidly add 20 ml concentrated sulfuric acid, directing the stream into the suspension. Immediately swirl the fast gently until the soy and reagent are mixed. Then, move vigorously for a total of 1 minute. To minimize heat loss, allow the fast to stand for 30 minutes in a firm hood. Then, add 100 ml of water into the fast. If proceed the titration by manual method, add 3 to 4 drops of phenantholine indicator and titrate the solution with 0.5 molar for a sulfate solution. At the end point is approach. Proceed the furrow in titration when using phenantholine indicator. The solution take on a greenish cache and then change to a dark green. At this point, add the ferrous sulfate heptahydrate drop by drop until the color changes sharply from blue to red. Maroon color in reflected light against a white background. Determine 1 to 3 branks in the same manner but without soy to standardize the potassium dichromate. In case you proceed by manual potentiometric titration. First, set an expand scale pH meter with a platinum electrode and caramel reference electrode to read the potential difference in millivolt. Insert the electrodes and temperature compensator in the solution and stir with a magnetic stirrer. Tall form beakers can be used as an alternative to conical fast, giving more room for the electrode, temperature compensator and view rate. Plot a titration curve by recording a value of measure potential difference in mineral 
and millilit titran 0.5 normal ferrosulfate added from a burette. The end point is then found on the point of infractions on the curve, approximately 750 millivolt. Titration are simply discontinued when this point is reached and the corresponding titrant consumption is then mature. During the titration, if over 8 ml of the 10 ml of dichromate has been reduced, the determination must be repeated with a smaller amount of soil sample. From the display equation, we can access that 1 ml of 1 normal dichromate solution is equivalent to 3 mg of carbon. After the reaction, the excess of dichromate is titrated with 0.5 mora ferrous sulfate or 0.5 ammonium ferrous sulfate as the display equation shows. For accuracy, we participate in an interlaboratory proficiency test at least once a year. The PTC score should be less than 2. If not, identify root cause, develop corrective and preventive actions, and address the problem. Perform replicate analysis of the certified reference material. Compare result of own laboratory with results of other laboratories as provided in the performance analysis report or certified reference material certificate. The old laboratory result is considered accurate when it's false within the reported 95% confidence. For the precision, Perform replicate analysis of 10% of samples in a test batch. Calculate the percent relative standard deviation using the display equation to determine if the precision of replicate analysis is within specification. Compare result with the target precision for the analyte concentration as indicated the display table which shows expected precision as a function of analyte concentration. Analyze at least one duplicate of the check samples or internal reference material in every batch analysis. Plot the result in the control chart. Monitor for the results that are outside of the specific limits. Identify the root causes and develop the corrective and preventive actions.